So now that we've painted all this out, the plan is to use these masks to determine how dense the scattering should be for temperature and for fuel. So you might think, okay, well, this is easy. Let's just create a merge. But as you can guess, it's really not so easy. <laughs> if we middle mouse here, first of all, we don't have temperature or fuel as an attribute. And so right now we have all these different meshes stacking on top of each other and there's nothing to notate what fuel is or what temperature is. So let's start there. Let's create a point wrangle. And after this temperature paint, let's specify temperature. So we'll say F at temperature is equal to at CD.R. Now, if you don't code in VEX or if you're new to that, let me tell you real quick what I just did. F stands for float. That means that this temperature value is allowed to have decimals in it. The at sign means create this attribute called temperature. And this is being set equal to our color at CD dot R. So the red component of color with the semicolon at the very end. So we have that. Let's uh, bring that over to our temperature right here. And now do the same kind of thing, except this time we will say fuel. So F at fuel is equal to CD dot R and plug that in over here. Okay, so now that we have this, we at least have some attributes that represent temperature and fuel. That's good. Let's also clean up the attributes that are coming in. So if I middle mouse the logs here, we have this normal and UV. We don't need any of that right now. So use a clean sop, uncheck all this, and then check on remove groups, remove attributes and do that for both sides. So now we have something like this. Okay, so that cleaned it up pretty good. Let's highlight all these wrangles, bring that to the merge. And now if we middle mouse, we still have an issue here. We don't have anything for temperature and fuel, it says. And why is that? Well, when this merge goes to figure out how it should handle merging, you know, an attribute over here, it says, okay, I got temperature, there is no fuel. And then it goes over here and it says, we got fuel, there is no temperature. That's why it's giving you this message. So just to keep things clean, let's also specify what fuel is on this particular stream. So F at fuel is equal to zero. And we'll do the same kind of thing over here for temperature. Temperature is equal to zero. And then two more times, F at fuel equals zero. One more time, F at temperature equals zero. And there we go. Now we don't have any error messages. So we have all these meshes. They're stacked on top of each other. Let's use a fuse node and fuse these points together. The default settings will work just fine. All we need to do now is go down to this attributes to snap at the very bottom, say plus. Now we're going to merge in temperature with all of our points and do the same thing with fuel. Now this isn't going to work very well at first because right now our, our output values setting is set to first match, which means that when it goes to fuse the points, it's just going to go with the first match it finds of this attribute. And we don't want that. Instead, let's set this to maximum so that it'll always just go with the maximum value that it finds when points are fusing together. Likewise, over here, so maximum. If we go to our geo spreadsheet, we can now see that we have a full range of values. So this temperature right here is one. There's our max values. And as we go down, there's our in-between values right here, and then we have our zero values all the way down here. So we do see, generally speaking, a full range happening with fuel and temperature. So now that we have most of that situated, we want to scatter points, and we want these areas that we just painted to represent how dense the points 
population is. So if we create a scatter SOP like this, and we use this density attribute, we could check that and replace that with temperature. Now we have points that are only scattering in the areas which see a high temperature. So that's pretty cool. Let's turn this up to maybe 3,000. But you'll notice that along the logs, we don't have enough points. When we went back and painted this, we tried to generally get things in the right area for this distribution right here, but it's not showing up the way that we'd like it to. So to change this, we could try repainting, but a much better way is just to go to this point wrangle, and then let's take our temperature and multiply this times our own custom parameter. So we'll say times CHF, that means we're creating our own float channel here. Within parentheses, we'll then say, this is our temp scale. Click this icon. And now we can control this value, which is getting multiplied against temperature on our logs. If let's say we do 2.5, we go down here. Now you could see that more of these points are going to start showing up where the logs are. So if we keep on turning this up, you'll notice that we start seeing more of these points show up. So that's a, a pretty cool way of controlling how densely populated you want certain spaces to be. Now, just to keep track of what points we're actually seeing here, let's set our color to white. So V at CD is equal to curly brackets one, one, one. And then that way we know for sure that we can see these points very easily. Let's just copy this across all of our wrangles and paste. So we'll go like that. Right there, right there, and then one more time, like that. So that that way, when we look at the scatter, we can very clearly see what's happening. I've also added scales to all of our fuel and temperature values as well. So now we're not just using this temperature scale right here. We now have the same sort of control over here with the fuel scale, temp scale, fuel scale. Also, I want to talk about one more thing. I had scaled up this temperature up to about 14, but the problem with that is that it's going to scale up the values that get rasterized eventually with those points as well. So rather than turning up our temperature scale, it's a better idea to always keep everything between zero and one. And so what makes sense is instead of turning up, let's turn down. So right here, we want to turn up the amount of points that show up for our logs. Let's go to our embers and turn down the scale. And as you can see, now the distribution hits more of the logs in general. And then that way, we, uh, we don't have values that are getting too crazy and, uh, and we can still get what we want with the number of points and uh, we're, we're all good to go. Let's also set a scatter for fuel. Do that right here. So check that, say fuel. And we can also manage the same kind of thing. I think in general, this is actually about right. We might want to turn down the fuel on our logs just a little bit. So let's go to this, turn this down. And now, as you can see, we start to get more of these points showing up on our embers. And now we have something that's just a little bit better of a distribution between the two. Okay, great. So we already have these points. We have the attributes we want on them. That means we don't really need this fuel source. I mean, all we're doing here is we are specifying a P scale and we can do that ourselves through a wrangle. So fun fact, we don't need that pyro source anymore because we have been getting all fancy with this setup which is even better. Let's now set a P scale over here with this point wrangle, F at P scale, set this to one for the time being. This is going to affect how large the particles are when they go to rasterize. And then let's merge these two streams together like so. And in the next lesson, we will rasterize.